Hi guys, going to do a little bit of housekeeping today. We're going to clean these two spray guns. Now, we'll strip them down, go through them completely, and I'll show you the ins and outs of how it all goes together. Now, we've just completed a job with them, and I did an acrylic touch-up, which is something that's pretty unusual for me. I haven't played with acrylics for quite a few years, so this gun I cleaned up the other day, and it had been used for a black gun for quite a lot of years, so it was very caked up with paint and bits and pieces, so I stripped it and cleaned it out for the job. We put some colour on and we put some clear through it as well at the end of it and basically we'll just go through cleaning it up from that stage. And this other gun, one of my two pack guns, I used for putting a sealer layer on before we started the acrylic repair job. So stay with us and we'll pull them all down and we'll go through and step by step clean them out so they're ready for use again. Okay, we've got our car painted and now we're going to have to clean our spray guns. You will have noticed that I used a gravity feed gun for putting the sealer layer on and the suction feed gun for doing the colour. Now this one is my old acrylic gun and I've had it for 25 years or so. So I've used it because I had it. I don't have an acrylic sized gun with a gravity feed. Now it really comes down to personal preference which gun you choose to buy and for acrylic providing you've got a 2mm nozzle on it it's all you need. Gravity or suction they'll both work just as well. Some people prefer the gravities because if you're painting roofs, the pot's not in the way, you don't run the risk of the pot falling down and touching the roof while you're painting it. Other people say there's no problem, you can get up on enough of an angle that you don't have a problem. I've used both, um, both work really well. What I do notice is though, if you're painting insides of the doors when you've got the doors hung on the car, your suction feed gun's always better. It seems to get into the corners better than what these will because the pot always wants to be hitting the dash or the pillar or something like that. So, once again, just comes down to personal preference. Now, with cleaning your gun, you're going to come in contact with thinner. I do recommend you wear gloves, and there's no really good gloves on the market for cleaning spray guns out with gun wash thinner. They're all going to disintegrate. So I've been using these nitrile ones. I put on a couple of layers, and that will last long enough to get the average spray gun clean. So we've got this thinner that we were using when we were blending our edges in. This has got a little bit of red in it. That I'd be using this up first to just rinse the gun with. So we're going to tip a bit in it. And we're just going to slosh it around inside the pot. Make sure it gets everywhere. Put your finger over the vent hole. And then just spray a bit of air through it to clear the paint that's still left in the spray gun. Not like this one in the sand in there. How are you doing that? That's all good. Now, this is my slops bucket. Every painter needs a slops bucket. It's just an old paint tin that you throw all your old gun wash in. And it's particularly handy. Sometimes I'll just take a pot full out of that to rinse guns with. All your stirrers and things like that, just drop them in the slops bucket and clean them up with that. Now, what we'll do is we'll strip the spray gun. Do not be afraid to pull your spray gun apart. It's a very simple piece of equipment. You really need to to keep them clean. Now, back in the day, very few painters used to dismantle these guns when they were using acrylic all the time. All they'd do is just rinse the pot out, flush a bit of thinner through it, and then they go on to their next colour. And over the course of a year or so, the pot would grow with all the drips and runs that would come down the outside of the pot, and they'd be quite thick with paint build up on them. And then once a year, you'd strip them down, soak them in some thinners, and get it all off, and they'd be ready to go again. But with two-pack paint, you've got to keep your guns clean and it really is the best thing to do. So, this is the air cap. This is the little piece that decides where the paint goes. And there's little tiny holes in it, and they all need to be cleaned. If you leave the gun sitting with a bit of paint and stuff in there, it can block these holes up, and then pretty soon it's not working. So, I have a mixing pot just with a bit of thinner in it, and I'll drop all the small pieces in there. The next bit's your nozzle. Fluid cap. That same thing. It's got a hole through the middle of it for the paint to come out, but it's also got air holes in it, and all of these need to be cleaned. All right, your last piece in here is the needle. That just comes out, dropped in the thinner. I've got a suction filter on the bottom. Now these are a screen 
if we just strain your paint out, there's any foreign contaminants still in the pot, these will pick them up. So pull that off, give it a clean in the thinner. Now, we've got nothing left in the spray gun. It's just an empty tube all the way up through into the head. So we need a long cleaning brush, a bit of thinner on it, and just all the way through until it comes right up inside the spray gun. And you'll be able to see the end of the brush inside there. Give it a few twists, pull it back out, and that's that part clean. A quite slightly fatter brush, just in from the front. Give that a good clean around. Now another spot where you'll get paint build up that sits in a spray gun is forward of this little seal area in the front here. You've actually got a little bit of casting that's bored through for the needle to run in and paint will go back to the seal and sit in there and it'll dry. And when you start using the spray gun, the needle's going to walk these little bits of paint out and they'll come out in your paint job. So, little spray gun cleaning brush in through the front and just clean that passage out. For the outside of the gun, I just use a one inch paintbrush. And I'll give it just a good wash off with the thinner. Any paint that's on there, brush that off. Now with fresh two pack or with acrylics, cleaning the gun up straight after you use it, everything's going to come off super easy. Now another little spot that will catch people on some of these suction feed guns where the vent hole is. There's a little cavity inside the top rim of the pot and that will often have a little bit of dried paint in it. So it pays to get that out with a brush. Some other suction feed guns will have a tube that curls around and it pays to take them off and clean through the tube because they'll actually be another source of paint sitting in the gun and not coming out and causing problems later on. Now I like to dry all my parts off. Just give that a dry. Give the pot a wash. Now quite often, the mixing pot that I use for um, mixing my paint in is the one I use for cleaning the gun in. And then I wash the pot out and then I can um, use the mixing cup again next time. You can see the gloves are starting to fail now. Now when I put them back together, I use a little bit of spray gun grease. If you don't have spray gun grease, a little few drops of engine oil will work as well. Now that protects all your thread, stops them binding, and it also just helps with the longevity of the gun. It also means that the needle's going to move freely in the gun and things like that. So it pays to just put a little bit on there. Now be aware that anything you put inside the gun, if you put too much of a dob of grease on and it oozes out, it can get into the air path and get blown out into the paint or it can fall into the fluid cavity and get blown out of the paint as well. So a minimal approach here is best. There's a little seal I talked about before just in here and that stops the air entering. So these are suction feed guns. So if you've got air that's leaking into the gun, it's going to spit when it's painting. And once again, it's going to cause problems to your paint job. So that needs to be lubricated. And for many years I just used a few drops of engine oil on the needle as I put it back together and that works well. Uh, spray gun grease is better, but not absolutely necessary. On the adjusting screw, a little bit on the thread. Now this is not exposed to air pressure or to um, paint, so you can put plenty on there. Now one thing it pays to do 
not every time you clean your gun, but probably once a week or something like that if you're using it all week, is just put a few drops on the air valve, just of engine oil, and that'll just sort of work in there and it'll just keep that little packing in there nice and happy. And just put a dollar grease on the thread here, put the air cap back on. Now, while you get the air cap off, actually, before we get that far, all these little holes, you can get these cleaning rods and they're just the shot for going through these little tiny holes on them, make sure they're all clean and free. Because if you've even got one of those blocked up, the fan pattern as it's coming out will lean off to one side. And you'll notice sometimes if you pick your gun up and start spraying and you've got your fan leaning one way or the other, it'll be one of these little holes that's blocked up. Suction filter back on it. And that spray gun's ready to use again. Okay, I'm just going to do my gravity feed gun now. Same thing as before, just a bit of thinners in it. Give it a bit of a shake around. Just purge the excess paint out of the gun. And the rest of it into the slots bucket. Now, this gun, it's got the removable vent in the top. There's a splash ring in the top so that your paint when it's inside the pot and you're moving around isn't splashing out onto the thread all the time. And like a lot of the modern guns now, it's a quick release pot, quarter of a turn and it comes off. Gravity guns have got a little filter which presses into the body of the gun there. So that just comes out, we'll throw it in the bin to give him a wash. Same thing, air cap off the front of it. It's got the little holes in the same as before. So the reality is, they're all the same thing, just laid out a bit differently. Take our fluid cap out. And same thing again, row of little holes, hole through the middle for the fluid, holes around the edge for the air to go through. Mixture adjustment and the needle. Right, exactly the same as we did with the suction feed gun. Brush the outside of the body to get any excess paint material off it. Wash that off and then run a brush through the paint passage. And same as before, you need to run a brush into the needle cavity. Now for a long time, I was getting little flecks of paint coming through in my clear coats. And it's a bit embarrassing when you paint a white car after you painted a black car and you might do a clear over solid and there's these little black spikes in it. And I worked it out, it was the paint just sitting inside that little bit of a casting in there and it was coming out, walking out with the needle. Dry that all off. Wash out the pot. Gloves are going to make your hands a bit slippery guys, it's just a matter of working with it. But a lot of this stuff is carcinogenic, so if you can avoid contact with it, it's better in the long run. With these little removable vents, I like to put a brush in those as well and find the little vent hole around the edge and put a brush in through that as well. The paint sort of dries in there and it'll block up the vent hole. Now, dry those parts. Fluid nozzle. The internal filter 
and we've got the mixture adjusting screen. As you can see, I changed my gloves just before I started this spray gun and the outside pair are already gone pretty soggy and stretchy. So, two pairs of gloves, you will get through a spray gun clean quite easily with it. So, you just put this one back together. It's exactly the same as before. A little bit of lubrication on the threads. Being very careful not to get anything into an air passage or into the paint passage. Same thing, lubricate the needle where it runs through the seal and lubricate the barrel where it's walking backwards and forwards in the housing of the gun. Bit of lubricant on the thread of the adjustment. Now I like to leave my spray guns adjusted down too fine because simply if you pick it up and you've got it wound right out you can hit your panel just absent-mindedly and all of a sudden you get a big gob of paint will come out and you can have the start of a run of problems like that. So if you bring them in too fine, as soon as you go to paint with it, you will realise it's too tight and then just adjust it out until you're comfortable with your spray pattern. My little OCD moment, I always like to put the brand name the right way up on the front when I put the air cap back on. Can't help it, it's just the way I am. Pop back on with the filter in it. Assemble the lid up. Put the lid back on it. Now that one also is ready to go. I don't leave any of my spray guns sitting with thinners in them. I don't leave them in pots of thinners. Now, this spray gun would be over 10 years old. It's had regular use in a restoration workshop that whole time. This spray gun here was new in 1972. I bought it second hand, it's still working fine as well. So, you buy a spray gun, you look after it, you're gonna have it for a lot of years. I'm Rob Teal, I hope you enjoyed watching it. We've enjoyed making it. Thank you for watching. See you next time.